Hey everyone, this is Scott Weinkiewicz. Uh, I do not shoot events that often, but when I do and a client requests an album, I actually do my album proofing using Slide Deck. It's a WordPress plugin that allows you to create um, simple uh, search engine optimized uh, slides using um, very easy tools. So you can actually um, aggregate from different sources like Google Plus or 500 Pixels or Instagram, Pinterest, things like that. Or you can create your own custom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom slide deck that will actually use, um, I'm going to use just random photos for the example, but you'll get the idea. So the first thing I want to do is name this album proofing example. The next thing I'm going to, you can see here this image slide. I want to actually upload multiple. So I'm going to upload multiple photos. And um, for the example, just imagine that uh, I'm doing a, a 10 by 10 album and I've cropped them already. So we're going to select the photos and we're going to go to album proof, select all of them and open. Now it's going to upload all of these photos. And when it's done, um, you know, the photos will be placed into this slide deck. And I want to mention that these photos are random. They're just random photos I've taken. They're not from a, an actual event. And I did not crop these either. So I'm going to show you how um, if you are doing your album and uh, your album is 10 by 10, let's say, um, I usually will crop in Lightroom and export for the album lab. Uh, however, in this example, I'm going to show you that you don't need to in your proof if you don't want to, but um, of course you are, you are better off to do the cropping beforehand so that it's the way you want it, not the way the lab wants it. So after they all upload, you're going to hit Add All to Slide Deck. And you'll see here they all loaded perfectly. Okay, there's seven photos. Now this is the default that it's going to load. And what I'm going to do is I actually want to use this one called Toolkit, this lens. So lenses are actually the style of uh, slide decks. And then you've got other settings below. So what I'm going to do is first... Um, I don't want the captions to show. You can see here it actually put the caption as the, the title of the, uh, the file name of the image. So the first thing I'm going to do is click and edit each one of these and I'm going to make it so that there's no caption. And you can see that here there's image scaling, scale proportionally and crop and then there's other options. So if you were doing, if you were actually cropping beforehand and making the slide the exact dimensions of your album then you can do um, do not scale images or scale proportionally and do not crop or whatever you need to do. So for me, I'm going to do scale proportionally and crop for all of them, which is the default. Um, so then again, no caption and no text and we're going to hit apply and go through the, all of these. So um, I'm going to go through them all real quick so that you're not sitting here watching me do each one. I'll do another one and then I'll pause and go through the rest. So again, click on the next slide no caption, no body text, scale proportion and crop, apply. Now, uh, I'll be right back as soon as I'm done. Okay, so I just finished, I went through all seven, and now you can see that there's no um, titles anymore um, on any of the photos. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to edit the, the uh, actual lens. So the slide, we're gonna change some settings. So now let's say your album is 10 by 10. So of course, you're going to want it to be, your height and width to be identical. So 10 by 10, a good size would be maybe, you know, 10 by 10 would be 1,000 by 1,000. But if your website is not 1,000 uh, pixels wide, then it's going to be too big. So what I do is I actually do 800 because it's a pretty good size. You can see the photo clearly and it's, it's, it'll be nice and big on the page. So custom and then pick your size. And then what I do is um, we're going to turn the overlay off. The overlay was that little share button at the top. Let me turn it back on so you can see what it was. This. So unless you want your client to, um, to share the album um, with other people on, on Facebook and Twitter, then you really want to hide it. So um, for my example, however, 
I'm going to leave it on because I don't mind if people share the example because then they see, they're seeing what I'm doing to provide an album proof. However, if I was actually doing it for a client, I would turn that off. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on a front cover. I don't want a back cover, but I do want the front cover. So you can see what the front cover does. It actually adds a little book type uh, feel to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that. And then I'm going to um, change the title to Album Proof Example. Change the font to something that suits me better. And then your accent color is this little tab to open the book. Turn off Show Curator because we don't need to show that. And then you've got different styles. Now, again, I usually do a black leather album. So here's a black leather album. And then you've got an option for Peak. Peak is a pretty neat feature, but um, you know, I don't know if it works well for everybody, but you can see what it does. It actually shows the first page. So I'm going to leave that off for now and hit Save Changes. And now you'll see that the example here will actually adjust. So now, if someone clicks here, it's going to open up to the album. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to Appearance. And again, you've got Accent Color. So if you were leaving... Um, the caption here, your accent color would be the text color, but we're not. So don't worry about that. Uh, border frame, I am using hairline for my albums just so it pops off the page a little bit. The lens variation, if you were using uh, the text, the captions or text, then you would have to pick here, but because we have nothing, don't need to worry about it. Content, what this is, is if you wanted to link to a page, you could do that but we're not going to, so you can just ignore that. Navigation is, um, once you're in the album itself, navigation are these. Um, you got all, this different, all these different things. So the slide controls, we're gonna say on hover. Keyboard navigation means that people can actually hit left and right on their keyboard to um, navigate through the album. So for this, I will leave that on. Mouse wheel is if someone actually wanted to use the wheel on the mouse to navigate. I turn that off because it gets a little bit too much if you're clicking and using the keyboard and doing that. Touch navigation is great because if someone's viewing your album proof on their iPad or iPhone, then or, or any tablet for that matter, then they can actually swipe in order to go to the next page. Uh, navigation position, that is actually these right here, these little dots, and you can change those, but we're gonna turn them off. So now there's no dots, no thumbnails, nothing. And then, of course, you can change your, um, your arrow style if you wanted to. So let's go back here so you can see now the changes. So now there's no more buttons down here, no little dots. We've got the arrows here, which go away uh, when you're not hovering over it. And then playback, um, depending on what you're doing, uh, if you're just doing a slideshow, then you turn you could turn random on, but for an album, obviously you want this in the order that you're, uh, it's going to be in the album. And then you have autoplay. So autoplay, uh, I would, I turned it off for the albums, but you could turn it on if you wanted to, it's up to you. And then loop playback off so that when it gets to the end, it's at the end. And then you've got slide transitions, of course. I like slide. It's simple. That's just literally a slide to the next page. You could do a crossfade if you wanted to. There's a lot of animation styles and things like that. So that's really how you would um, do an album proof. So we've got now a, you know, in theory, a 10 by 10 album right here that people can, your clients can look through and see if they like what you did. So then we, we're going to hit save. And then what next thing we're going to do is visit um, a proofing page where we're going to add the album to the page. So here we are. This is uh, an album proofing example page that I created. Now, typically, as you can see here in the text, I uh, will put the album proof at the top of a proofing gallery of a client session. So uh, instead of just putting the album on its own, after the clients have picked the photos they want for the album, I will put that on the same gallery so that they don't have two different links. But for this example, I'm just putting it in its own. So after you've created it, you've got a little slide deck button here. We're going to click that slide deck to insert uh, the one that we just created. So here's the album proofing example. And then we're going to insert that right here. We can actually move, move that space. So here's a short code that it created. Then we're going to hit update. 
now this page um, is going to be updated with our new album. So now if I hit view proofing post, here is our album on the page. Now, I'm going to use the keyboard. Uh, once I enter the album itself, I'm going to use the keyboard, not the mouse, so the mouse is over here, keyboard left and right to navigate through the album. So that's how simple it is for you to create an album proof for your clients. Now again, if your album is actually, uh, you know, more of a rectangle than a square, then you can change the dimensions to however you need. That's how flexible slide deck is. And again, I usually turn this part off for um, actual clients, but for the example page, I'm leaving it active so that people can share it if they like it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on this post. And thanks for watching.